Hi guys, it's car booty time again. So I was at the second hand market this morning and one of the guys I've been buying off fairly regularly had five computers, five PC towers, of which I wanted two of them. But in the end, I have all five of them. So I'll show you what I've got, which I have to on the mobile phone because the, the other side of the room. And then let's have a look to see if we can make any money out of this stuff and if any of it is really interesting, yeah? Okay, I'll just show you what I have. So here are the five uh, computers. Obviously, the two beige ones I really wanted and the other three I really didn't want. I haven't opened up either of the beige ones or either of the uh, Dell computers, which they are. So this one at the end, I did have a look inside because I didn't know what this one was. It's a socket 775. I'm pretty sure it's nothing I really wanted. So that's what we've got. So we'll have a look at the Dells first. Quick look, not very interesting. And then we can look at the others and we can have a good look at these machines, yeah. So get your thinking caps on what you think we might have here. I'm sure you're wondering, or maybe not because you've seen my videos before, why I ended up with three computers I didn't want. Well, basically the two beige towers, which I did want, I offered him 15 euros each, not messing about because that's what I generally pay him for computers. And he said, tell you what, tell you what, do you a deal, yeah? Do you a deal, do you a deal? You can have all five for 50 euros. So I had a look inside the one which isn't a Dell. It's a socket 775, wasn't interested. I said, no, I'll just have these two for 30. No, no, you have all five for 50, have all five for 50. And I even got to the point where I thought, you know what? If he'd asked for 25 each for those two old machines, I'd have paid it. <laughs> I'd have argued, but I would have actually paid it for them. So he then said, look, I tell you what, I'll do you a deal. And he pulled these out of a box. So there's an AGP graphics card. We have a Soundblast Live PCI. He said, I tell you what, 50, you can have these as well. So at this point, I just gave in. There you go, 50 euros. And he says, I'll give you a lift to your car as well. So he, he gave me a lift to the van with them. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I have five computers for 50 euros, of which I actually only want two of them. If I'd honestly almost put it to look, I'll give you 50 and just take these two, it would have actually been counterproductive because... Next time, we'll be asking more money, thinking, oh, well, if he gives 25 each for them, I'll, I'll ask him for 25. <laughs> so that was it. So we have these. We can have a look at when we look at some of the other machines. And we have this. Now, this isn't even complete. The stuff rattling around inside it, yeah. Something's just even fell out of it. Uh, that fell out of it, so this is pieces of a computer, but it's mine, so what we'll do is I'll have a quick look at the three not very interesting machines and see can I possibly get 20 euros out of them. Uh, if I can't, I'm not overly fussed because I'm sure I can get 50 out of the two basically. Uh, this is a out of focus uh, Pentium 4 inside. Uh, Pentium 4 inside, it has a, uh, no it doesn't have a license on it, a number as such, but it's a Pentium 4, probably a socket 775 again, uh, yeah because there's, there's plenty of uh, USBs on so I'm sure this is a socket 775, Pentium 4, really not the most interesting thing in the world, can I even get into it, yeah, can I get into this thing? two buttons on the side I'm guessing that they push in or something sometimes these things can be a bit like a Chinese puzzle I find ah it lifts push the buttons <laughs> uh, that's what's in our PC 
that's what's inside our PC. Looks like there's another one of these things stuck in the top of it. That hinges open. You know, I might have a use for this. So, DVD ROM. Another optical drive, I think. Hmm. Hmm. Or whatever that is. What's it say on it? Made in the Philippines, NEC. Well, it's not a. I'm not sure what it is actually. It's a one of them, yeah, it's a one of them. Just pulls out. Oh yeah, I see you're supposed to lift that and it pulls out. We've got one of them. Okay. Well, what we have, maybe or maybe not. You know, you guys, some of you watching my videos, I've been working on a active load. And I was considering what sort of case to put it in. If we get all this plastic work off here and just get down to the metal chassis which hinges up, I might be able to use this. I might be able to use this. Another bit of something stuck in here. That says floppy disk, but there's nothing in it. Oh, so that's, well, no, I mean, it's not a floppy drive. Is it? Yeah. Probably is. Probably is a floppy drive. That's not like a... Is that an AGP slot? PCI. No. Oh. Hmm, I will. Yeah. Hmm, I will. It's all cool off here. Yeah? Okay. We we getting we getting there. I mean I could pack this up. It has a basically a standard ATX connection. Mm. I want to know if that's <laughs> Okay, this this thing also we can see uh, has a whole load of bad capacitors all along here. Let me just zoom down a little bit. Yeah, can you see them under there? All very bad. It really isn't worth trying to fix this thing. I honestly don't believe it's actually even worth trying to fix. But I didn't want it yet. It just came. It just came. Maybe. I can do something with the the metal chassis, possibly. Yeah. Well, here, let's show you. Have a look. Ah, oh. <laughs> it says a socket. Well, it came out with it, but it's a socket four seven eight. So this must be an AGP slot. The only way this thing is going to be worth any money is if this is one of the stupidly fast socket 478s. Which is well stuck on with the nice wet heatsink compound. Shall we try and power this up? I mean, I... sorry, I'm wiping the muck off everywhere. One moment. Shall we try and power this up? Uh, maybe not with all these bad capacitors. Probably isn't worth bothering. Let's clean the muck off this and see what it actually is. Okay. No, it's like a 2.6 gigahertz one. It's nothing special. Oh, 2.8 or something. It's the 3.2s that are worth the money. They really did. This isn't of any value on the retro market unfortunately 
Oh, yeah. They use decent heat sink on that, I'll say that much. Do you think somebody's put fresh heat sink compound on this because it was crashing and they haven't realised that all these capacitors are God, yeah. This looks like new stuff to me. I mean, I'm just thinking from the age of this, let's think logically, from the age of this, right, this would have white heat sink compound. Yeah, would you all agree with that? This would have white heat sink compound. Yep, Pentium 2.8 gigahertz. I'll just focus it a little bit. So, as I was saying, from the age of this, this would have had white heat sink compound, and you would expect it to be very hard and dry by now. Uh, so, what does Sherlock say? This stuff looks new. Uh, plenty of it. Looks new. So, I actually think somebody has put new heat sink compound on this too much of it by the way just trying to stop it from crashing yeah when all the capacitors are dead <laughs> dead yeah all the capacitors are really bad and they put this stuff on <laughs> i hope that wasn't a computer shop i really do hope that was not a computer shop who has done that uh -huh. <laughs> look at them, look at them. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, actually, I think I've got five viewers with a full down to that. I might get, <laughs> I might get a little bit for that. This is a right good hefty heat sink. It's really solid. It's not copper, but. I'm sure that will get used for some project. Yeah, I can see that being used for some project. It wouldn't be difficult to put a fan on top of it. Yeah. And not to leave any questions unanswered, is this an AGP slot? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it certainly is. So, you could actually use this for... Uh, Retro gaming Windows 98 or something depending on the drivers, but Really, I don't think it's really worth the bother to repair this one. Unfortunately Okay, next what else have we got? Well, this is another Dell PC. It has a Intel inside Pentium 4 sticker on as well uh, Windows XP and in fact it has a Windows XP license number on it which I kind of collect and we better see if we can get inside this it looks like this is designed to be used as a tower or as a desktop whichever you prefer and it looks like the other end is the side that comes off how do we get into this one uh, Well, it's upside down. Oh, this side. It looks like this side should come off. I don't like these things. They're always far more of a pain in the ass to get into than you might expect them to be, yeah? Oh, okay, so the whole thing tips forwards like the other one, just a bigger version. There's more stuff in this. Yeah. <laughs> Some more stuff stuck into it. Uh, 80 gigabytes hard drive. 80 gig. Uh, yeah, another 280 gigabytes hard drive. And oh, and another hard drive. There's three hard drives in here. So there's 280 gigs, and down in here is also a IDE hard drive. Let's get that out of it. If I can get it out of it, it's, it's well stuck down in there. Yeah, I'm sure it will come out. I'm sure it'll come out. <sighs> Move some cables out of the way first. <laughs> uh, let's see what else I can get out of this thing. Okay. DVD writer.
floppy drive and the other hard drive ah. I've got it okay that's a 250 gig okay so that's what was basically inside it um, a good size heat sink oh obviously yeah the fans behind it and it's probably a 775 as I, I would think cool well it says Pentium 4 on the front of it yeah it's 775 so this is an IDE floppy drive with no front so there's nothing here of any value I don't think 80 gig oh <laughs> somebody obviously wants to make sure we don't get the data off these hard drives let me show you yeah so they obviously don't want us accessing the data on these drives uh, smashed all the connections but looks like this I'll show you. I bet that's the EEPROM chip that one I bet that's the EEPROM so I suppose in theory you could get you know some of these cards from another drive of this model and um, apart from the fact they've trashed all the connections going in here you could probably actually take the EEPROMs off these if you need to I'm not sure they're quite old stick them under the boards and you could actually if you really wanted to but the fun thing is this is an IDE hard drive 250 gig that may well be the operating system and this one's completely intact <laughs> that's, uh, that's fun shall we see if we can actually power this up uh, I need two RAM sticks and then set this is it set to master let me have a look yeah it says it's set to master sorry it's a bit blurred for you I'll just alter the focus there you go so the two jumpers, this is actually set to master. Let's see if this has got the operating system on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if it has. Only useful thing on here is probably just the EEPROM chips, yeah, before they go in the bin. Alright, let's try it. Okay, I've put two one gig strips in. Um, normally I would check for shorts on the 12 volts, but I really couldn't care less about this machine. We can actually just attach a power cable and see if it will give us a picture. And if it gives us a picture, let's stick that hard drive on and see if we can access it. Well, we've got power. There's an orange light lit up. There's a yellow light lit up there. It's lit up. Where's the on-off switch? It's running anyway. I can feel the fan running. Get a monitor. Stick a monitor on it. Oh, it's bleeped. Okay, it bleeped. But a blue light on the monitor. Okay, so it actually is on. Let's stick the hard drive on, the, the IDE hard drive, and see if it actually boots from it. Just for the hell of it, yeah, just for the fun of it. Okay, so uh, actually, you know, a 250 gig IDE is probably worth a few quid. Yeah, the large capacity IDEs are worth a little bit. Especially the 500s. Did they make one gigs? I honestly don't know. An IDE. Uh, if they did, I bet they're worth a bit. For the retro market, yeah. But I think that's... We can look at that one, see if it's actually worth a little bit. So I attached it on the computer. Let's plug it back in again. Let's see if it'll actually boot from it. No. In fact, you might click... Oh well. One moment. Dow Optiplex. 
and value configuration run setup. Okay, let me attach a keyboard as well. Okay. Well, it works. The keyboard works. Something's happening. <laughs> oh my god. The incompetence of some people. The incompetence is just absolutely. I'm, I'm gobsmacked, guys. I'm gobsmacked. Yeah. How can anybody be so determined to destroy the data on the PC and fail so thoroughly? Yeah. <laughs> Is there even a password on it? Let me see. Uh, let's see if we can actually get into it. Can't in this set. Okay, so there is actually a password on it, fair enough. But you get my point, yeah? That that is just an amazing show of total incompetence with a computer. Yeah. Next. <laughs> well, I think I've had another five years worth of amusement out of that one. I'd be very interested to know what you guys want to say in the comments below about it. Yeah. So this PC is unbranded I did have a quick look at this because it might be something interesting but if you look at the back of it it has sort of like four USBs and the graphics card has HDMI so it probably isn't very old so it's probably PCIe so it's probably a socket 775 or nearly i5 i3 i7 something like that yeah so i had a look at this one so i have to uh, disconnect this a little what if you watch the channel regularly you will see that this type of case with the three fans in here i'm getting these regular there must have been a lot of these built by some company on the island some years ago using this type of case it's a gigabyte, 945, LGA775. So it's not very interesting. It has three RAM strips in it. So let's just zoom down a bit and you can have a look at just how uninteresting this thing really is. Yeah, you can have a closer look at how uninteresting it really is. Okay, I've got it. Um, so we know it's a 775, so it's like a or two duo or something uh, what's this strip of RAM that's a two gig and the other two look identical yeah. um, that's a one gig Kingston little Asus uh, graphics card uh, is that like a GT something or other See if this one works, eh? Let's see if it actually works. Um, yeah, another one gig strip. Does this thing actually switch on? I'll just check for shorts on this one, uh, on the 12 volts. There's no hard drives in this one, by the way. No hard drives in this one. So they've done a better job than that last one by the looks of it. Okay, can't recover the data off a hard drive you don't have, that's for sure. Let's have a quick look if there's any shorts on the 12. But I don't think there will be. Wouldn't, well, wouldn't be surprised if this works. Yeah, that's fine. Let's just power up. The problem with machines like this, they're not powerful enough to run modern software very well. And they're not old enough to be interesting. It's simple as that, really. Power's on. Start. Noisy fans. Or oh, 56k mode, I mean. Yeah, you can't see it at the front, can you? Yeah. Made a nice bleep. Can we get a picture? No, I'm not sure we do actually have a picture out of it. Just uh, shut it down and start it up again. 
well, shut down with the power button. No, it won't. Well, sh shut down that way, though, yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. Let's have another go. Power on. This time I have the monitor actually attached. Switch it on. Does it bleep this time? No, it doesn't bleep this time. Take one of the strips of RAM out. Let's just uh, see if it will start up. But to be quite honest, guys, it's really not just not interested in this machine. I'm far more interested in what's in the actual two machines I wanted to buy, and I'm sure you guys are as well. So we won't make, waste much time with this. I will take the graphics card out. We can have a quick look to see what it is. Uh, no longer wants to blip for whatever reason. Unless anybody can give me any good reason to look at this computer that I really didn't want anyway, I'm not going to do <laughs> How about that, yeah? <laughs> How about that? Power's off. It doesn't have onboard video, so I can't try that. Uh, this looks like a GT600 and something or other. I'll come out. Yeah, it, it's coming with a little bit of uh, persuasion. Yeah. It's not coming that easily, I'll tell you that. bit of persuasion required uh yeah gt220 yeah little gt220 gt220 card is it worth anything is it working we'll test it in a bit on something we know that's working oh and that's really <laughs> all i can say about a machine i really didn't want i don't suppose a cpu is anything very exciting you never know, yeah, I never know my look, you know, I never know my look. 775, as I knew it would be. Get that out of the way. What CPU do we have? Okay. Lots of nice capacitors and things on this, I might just... Strip a few of the interesting bits off this, to be quite honest. Okay, this is a Core 2 Duo 1.86. Yeah, slow one. No use. Let's look at something much more interesting, yeah. Well, actually, maybe not totally interesting but i'm just looking at the graphics card and the other one that i got as well and it's kind of like a, a increasing desperation to get my 20 euros worth out of the stuff that i didn't want so i'll just uh show you so you can see um this is the little gt220 this is not a thorough test i have it on the pc but i think you will see yeah splash screen it does give a picture so it probably is working it's just no hard drive on this machine so that is probably good let's have a look at the other graphics card that he gave me with this lot oh that's an agp one so we can't use it on the, use this rig but i'm sure we can look at it on one of the other ones so this is the stuff i actually wanted yeah now this one i have not opened up i don't know what's inside it i just knew that i wanted it anyway okay if you've been watching the channel you'll know that most of the machines i've been finding that would class as retro which to me is anything with agp or older have been pentium 4478s rather like that 
first of the two Dell ones were, but generally more interested in that one. Well, this one, I don't know because the Socket 478 usually, but maybe not always, have integrated VGA on them. And this doesn't have. So, two serial, one parallel, uh, no LAN port, uh, and only two USBs. Separate graphics card. This is a LAN card. This is some sort of sound blaster, no doubt. So, what do you think we've got here? Um, yeah, let's get some guesses in. I think this is probably, probably a Pentium 2 or 3 or maybe an AMD equivalent thereof. I don't know. I know some of you guys are absolutely dying to know what this is. Uh, any more clues? It's a full size ATX motherboard, I'll tell you that. It comes to the end of the machine. So what have we got? What is this? Yeah, what is it? What's in the box? Yeah. Come on, Richard, open the box. I know you're shouting out. Richard, Richard, you've dragged this out far enough. What's in the box? But I'd like, I'd really like, I know I have to trust you to do this, but hey, there's nothing to lose because there's no prizes for this. Please get your suggestions in the comments now. And just say commented at however many minutes this is. I don't know. Yeah, commented at however many minutes this is, and say I think it is a yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. But come on, this has got to be fun, yeah. Right. Have you got your comments in now? I'm not dragging this out honestly. <laughs> okay, you've paused the video. You've got your comments in. What have I got here? Okay. I was kind of right. It's a Pentium 2. So this is a slot A as it's called. Um yeah. Bingo, yeah, this is this is nice. This is this is one of the oldest PCs I have had from the car boot sale, I have to say. I think it's the first P2 I've actually had from there. It has a hard drive in, IDE. All the capacitors look good because this is before the capacitor plague, even though it's older. Uh, graphics card is an ATI. I can read this as an ATI Rage. Rage 2 plus Rage 1, 1 C it says. ATI Rage graphics card. Shall we just power this up and see if it works? We'll just uh, have a look. I mean, this doesn't have the uh, like this separate 12 volt connector for the CPU. If you look at this, this doesn't really have. Well, it, ha it has VRMs, but I think they go to 3.3 volts. These CPUs. I'm just going to try it. I'm honestly just going to try it. Let's see what it does. I'll get the camera where you can see it, and we will all see together. I'm going to give this some. Peripherals it will like, yeah. So a proper wheel mouse, okay, why not? And a beige PS2 keyboard, why not? This is a Spanish one I picked up at the car boot sale at some point or other. I think it works, I don't know, we'll find out. A power lead, yeah. power. Okay. Power's on. Does it start? Fans running. That is like something to do with the RAM or with the GPU, I think. Let me connect a monitor. Okay, monitor on there. Just push on all the RAM. So there's three strips of RAM in this that will quite happily run with one, I would say. Um, I'll disconnect the hard drive for now, the IDE. Let's see if we can actually get it into the BIOS, okay? And then we can try that. Once again, power it up. Nice, quiet fans. 
Okay, so it's not actually giving a picture. Let's try taking some of the RAM out and see actually what it does, how it blips, yeah? So we'll take this one out. This one can come out. I'll just leave the one strip for now. Let's try that. Hey, power on. Difference, yeah. That I think is saying a problem with the RAM. So I think maybe the other one was a problem with the GPU. If we can call it a GPU, the graphics card, yeah. right with two strips in now it doesn't bleep at all I think I need to take this one apart guys and we can have a look at it yeah I've got the motherboard and all the cards out of the case. This is the little graphics card, Rage 2C. Uh, ATI. So this is before the days of your Radeon cards and such like. There's a date code on it, but I can't easily read it. No, it probably isn't a date code, it's just some sort of stock code. But that's the graphics card. Oh yeah, 1998 ATI technology, okay. Um, we have a little uh, LAN card, PCI. And we have the motherboard, which is a QDI motherboard, which stood for Quality, Quality Design Innovation. I used to deal with them. They were based in Reading, UK, and I used to build a lot of computers using their stuff back in the day. So we have the motherboard with the RAM. I'm going to use a known good uh, power supply, early ATX power supply. And then let's see if we can get anything out of this. It has no onboard video, so I need to use a graphics card. Um, I have some known good AGP, but let's just see what we can do with it. I've just balanced it on a box with the AGP card that came with it. This is quite interesting. So this has 370 CPU card. And this is so you could take a socket 370, possibly a Pentium 3, I would think, and put it onto a slot A motherboard. Yeah, so that's effectively like a converter. That's actually quite an interesting thing to have, I would think. Um, we have two strips of RAM in at the moment. That's a 128. What's the other one? That's also a 128, but he didn't like that one on its own. So let's take that out. I think this might just have gummed up RAM slots, basically. Put this one in here. We can try cleaning them in a minute. Okay. Monitor. Let's see what it wants to do now. Once I've put the power into the power supply, of course. Let's go. Powered on. monitor lead fell out just by chance no bleeps put this back on here if it doesn't do anything now i'll put the analyzer card in as well but you can see me now okay let's try it No, it's not bleeping. Just take the RAM out. So we'll power it with no RAM, okay? See if we can get some life out of it. On. On. Yeah, okay. It's telling us there's no RAM. Those long bleeps. Let's even find any of this RAM it actually likes. And if it doesn't seem to like any, I'll try and clean these slots. Okay. 
So that one. Same continuous long bleep. This is uh, PC133 by the way. Try this one. I can also try just a different slot. Okay, we've got it in. Start. Ah. Oh. Powered on and powered off by itself that time. And stayed off. Didn't like that at all. Switched off. Power on. No RAM. Okay. Let's just try cleaning these slots. Okay, I've given them a clean, so we can just uh, try. Yeah, that's much more positive now. They're kind of like sticky before. Didn't feel right. Okay, now will it boot up? Different bleep. That long and three short or long and four short is almost certainly saying there's some problem with the graphics card. Let's do the same with this first. Let's give this a clean and see if it works. Otherwise I have a known good one we can try. Let's just give this a wipe over. He may have the same problem with the AGP slot as he's had with the RAM slots. Okay. Just have a bit of isopropyl on here. Okay. Looks quite clean. Let's go for the uh, slot as well. Looks a bit dusty down here. There's no corrosion or anything on this, so it's just dusty. Let's see if I go. I mean, I can always put it in the sink and wash it. Okay. Now let's try the same thing, which is repeatedly inserting the card. Notice this AZP slot has no latch to hold the card in, by the way. Quite common on old ones. Keep it stable. Right, try that. See if that has any more look. Yeah, see if that gives us a picture. If not, I'll try a different card. Doesn't seem to like that graphics card for some reason. Let me try a known good one. In fact, I'll tell you what, let me just try this. Cause, but I have a, a bit of an issue with this. There's like different voltage AGP cards. And I wonder if this would work with this. I mean, this has two notches in it. Let me see if I find another one that only has a single notch like this. Yes, this is an old SIS one as a single slot. I'd have to go and look it up what the, what the thing with the different slots was, but um, let's just try this for now and see if we actually get anything out of this. Okay. Have it on. Start. I don't know this is a good card, by the way. 
Ah, we have a picture. We have a picture. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's stick the hard drive on, see if it works. This is the hard drive that came with it. Seagate medal is 4321. I'm not sure what the capacity of that is. I'll stick it on here and some right at the top of the screen there, yeah? Because by the time I edit this video, I will have looped. But let's see, so... This is the cable that was actually on the machine, so this obviously is from a time when we had this type of ATA-66 type cables. Uh, we can connect it. It's, uh, I'm having to guess because it's not marked. Oh, it is marked. Okay, so this is this is the primary ID. The one there is the edge. So this we can connect. Power, because this will need a bit of power. <laughs> As I found out on the previous video, the hard drive don't work well without power. So uh, I won't make that mistake again. Power. Does it actually boot up? I'll connect the keyboard as well while we're at it. Let's put the uh, keyboard and mouse on this. Power on. We better put the camera where you guys can see because you're obviously... If you're still watching, you're obviously interested. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Yet yeah, quality design innovation, it says on that badge, you can probably not read it. It's found the hard drive. CPU installed, press Dell to enter BIOS setup, okay. Let's do that. I'll just, uh, it's, no doubt the CMOS battery's dead. Um, is there an option to load the password, load the defaults, yeah. Load setup defaults, yes. Okay. Um, save and exit. Yes. See what it does. Oh, listen to that drive. Listen to that, guys. Okay, it's working. Obviously, I don't have much RAM on the machine at the moment, so it's probably not good for XP, but it is running. I've cleaned the other uh, dims, so they're all in there now. They're 128 meg each. And if we look in Windows, we can see we have 320 meg of RAM, which is basically about right. And we have... 650 megahertz CPU so it's a Pentium 3 650 megahertz that's what's actually on the machine while we're here let's have a look at the other graphics cards and things I have so this is the one that came separately AGP uh, it's a, a GeForce uh, forget to focus at the right high, uh, FX5200, uh, zero, zero, 256 meg. So that's that graphics card. We, we will test that, but for now I think it's probably good. And, and the sound card, actually the one that came out of the machine and the one which I got separately are actually identical. So this is a Soundblaster Y 5.1, 
SB0220. One of them came separately, as I showed you. And the other one actually is here. So that's the one that came out of the machine. So we, we basically have two of those. Soundblaster Y 5.1. They sell for a little bit of money. So we'll put that on the side. I do like the sound of that hard drive. It takes me back that. This is the graphics card that came out. So this is the ATI. It says it says Rage 2C on the actual ROM there, the BIOS. Um, doesn't really have any other particularly identifying numbers on the back of it, but you can see it, okay? So what I'll do with this one, out of interest, I'm going to just take the BIOS chip out, clean all the pins and put it back in again. Because because the problems you had with this seem to be connections, basically. So let's just see if that will actually work if we do that. You can get tools like this to extract these. And as I have one, I will use one. But you can do it with a, a screwdriver or similar down either side. If you're careful, what you have to be concerned of is it's quite easy to crack the actual holder. This one does not want to come out easily. Even using the correct tool. Let's have another go at it. Okay. It's out. So there's the chip. I'll give the uh, pins a clean. I mean, they don't look particularly bad. They're a little bit tarnished. Now let's just see if it was as simple as that. Just give it a bit of clean with a little bit of ISO, a bit of kitchen roll. Okay. Yeah, looks a bit shinier now. Yeah. Let's just do the socket as well. Okay. These are all the easier to put back in than they were to take out. Just make sure you have it the right way. So there's like a little slotty, like a little angled bit. And there's an angled bit on the chip. So really it should only go in one way around anyway. I don't think he'd actually even could insert it the wrong way. Huh. Of course now it's got a bit stuck. <laughs> yeah. Let's get in there. Okay. Right, it's in. So let's see if that actually works. Before I plug it in, I'll just mention about this because I mentioned this earlier on the video that I knew this slot was related to the operating voltage. So AGP cards can have a slot here. They can have two slots like this one or they can just have a slot here. So this is a 3.3 .3 volt card, as is the one I fitted, the good one. This is actually a universal, so it will work in 3.3 or 1.5 volt. And if there's just one notch here, it's a 1.5 volt card, okay? With the slot and the motherboard, okay? This is a 3.3 volt slot. You can get them with just a key here, which is a 1.5 volt slot. And you can actually get them without a key at all, which is a universal slot that will work with either. So because of that, this one, which came separately, the uh, FX5200, I'm actually going to try it in here. This should work in both. Yeah. Let's try the ATI card. Came with it, see if it works now. We're ready to go then, let's give it a, a try. 
power on, start her up. No, it doesn't like this graphics card. It does not like this graphics card. These, if you look at them, basically don't have any VRM on here as such. It works at the 3.3 volts. But this little chip here, um, if I zoom down and show you, there's actually a voltage reference there. So if you do power supply repair, you'll probably be quite familiar with this, TL431. This is a little service mount one in an 8-pin package. And obviously, this is a voltage reference. So it may be that we have some different voltage rails here internally, but I don't see a MOSFET as such. There's another chip here which I don't really particularly recognise. Uh, can we even see what it is? It'll shine a light across it, that might help. Okay, that one. So, is it LS125A or is it the other number? Yeah, I don't recognise that chip. What I will just do, there are some capacitors here. So, this could be a voltage rail and there's two more here. So, I'm just going to measure the voltages around here just see if I can see something that isn't there. Otherwise, this may well just be a faulty card. It may be if we reprogram the BIOS, it might just work. But that's what we have. Let's just try the voltages. Okay, let's see what we have. We're running. Just find a, a good ground. It's not detected the graphics card, we know that. So there were some capacitors here. We'll just look at them. Which end, one end will be ground anyway. So that's 3.3 volts on that one. What's this one? 3.3. These are all 3.3. There's two more here. I can get onto them. 12 volts. 5 volts. So all those voltages basically make some sort of sense, the kind of what I would expect. One more here. Can't easily get under this one. 3.3. So all the voltages look okay on the card. So whatever's wrong with it, it it's something else. Yeah, maybe a corrupted BIOS, or I might be able to find one if I look around. But I'll see first if this card is actually of any value as a retro card. While we're here, let's just give this a go as well, see if this will actually work in here. It should do, in theory. Let's see if it actually wants to boot up with this one in or not. Okay. Starting up. And we have a picture on the screen. You hear the one bleep anyway. Yeah. So that card is almost certainly good. Okay, I'll just say now there's no hard drive fitted. I've taken the hard drive off. And it also says, again, 650 megahertz. And we can actually see the full amount of memory now. So I'm really pleased with this one. I've got to say that no matter what I find with the last machine, this machine will make more money than the 50 euros I paid for everything. And I did get a few bits off those other machines that really weren't interesting. So we can have a look and we can touch it all up. We'll do it at the end. But for now, we'll call this one a good one. And I think for 10 euros, it cost me 10 euros each of these five machines. This was an exceptionally good buy and it just goes to show what you can find down at the car boot sale. And now we have this one. I've left this till last because this is without doubt the oldest PC I've ever found at the car boot sale. I found one similar to this which turned out to be a 386DX40 but basically an AMD version but that came from a skip. So this came from the car boot sale and we can see what's in it, yeah. I don't know what this is. I haven't opened it up. You can probably even tell I've rusted the screws. I haven't been anywhere near this with a screwdriver yet. 
even though it looks like I have, but I haven't. And I don't know what it is, but we've got to have a guess, guys, haven't we? We've got to have a guess. So it has a turbo LED and a turbo button. Yeah. The turbo button actually slows it down to 8 megahertz when the turbo is on, and when the turbo is off, it runs at its full speed, whether it's a 33 or a 40 or a 66 megahertz, something like that. A uh, little LED display on the front, little lock and unlock case, which effectively doesn't unlock the case, it just, when you put it to lock and to take the keys out, nobody can boot it up, unless you open the case and <laughs> disconnect the thing. Yeah, reset. This type of case, I was building computers, I had a business building computers in 1993, and this is very typical of the sort of thing we would build in 93, 94. So it could be from my era, it could be a bit older. It's gonna be, in my opinion, either a 286, a 386, or a 486. Uh, Intel, it could be, a 486 Civics or AMD or IBM chip, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to guess, okay, we've got a grey cord floppy and we've got a... <laughs> it's broken. Oh, it's a, I want to say it's a blanking plate. Look at that, guys. It's not actually a floppy. It's a, it's a blanking plate that's made to look like a floppy. It has a grey cord one. It doesn't have a five and a quarter inch drive in it which is the old style floppy. So I don't think it's a 286 or a 386. I think it's probably going to be a 486. Now I've dragged that out enough. Shall we have a look? Yeah, we haven't got the back yet. I haven't got the back. You've seen it. So, parallel port, two serial ports, a game port. Just, but I don't see any audio connections like this. It hasn't got a sound card in it. And this has a VGA card. The fact it's VGA and not... CGA or EGA again makes me think this is probably a 486. Yeah. The old uh, DIN plug keyboard connector, yeah. Plenty of corrosion around it, which tells me almost certainly the battery has leaked out and it's probably all over the motherboard. Okay, let's have a look. So these things, you have to take the entire top off, there's no side panel, the whole thing comes off. So let's do it, let's do it, yeah. Let's do it. Whether this is actually more valuable on the retro market than that Pentium 3 440BX motherboard and processor, I don't know. I really don't know is the truth to that. It will all depend on what's inside this. I would suggest probably the Pentium 3 with the 440BX motherboard is a more desirable item and you would think would fetch the better price on eBay. But there again, with retro stuff, you can never tell. I sold, uh, I had from the flea market a little while back a, a 386 motherboard, which is working, but it was just loose. And previously I had a 486 motherboard, uh, an IO card and graphics card, which were loose. So I have found that the car boot before, but the first time I've ever found a complete machine. Okay. Let's see what we've got, shall we? What do we have? We have that. We have that M396F, it says. I think it's a 386. I think it's a 386 down here. The processor is actually built on the motherboard. You can't change it. This big socket you might see down there, I think it's a co processor. So I think it's a 386. I can read it now. It's an AMD, and it is a uh, SX 386SX40, that's what it actually is. But unlike the other one I have, which I found in the skip, which I can show you actually, uh, this has a hard drive, the original hard drive, where the other one didn't have a hard drive. Um, Connor CP3044. 
Is that like a 40 megabyte hard drive? Megabyte note, not a gigabyte. Okay, as I expected, this battery is leaked. So I think the best thing to do with this is to take it apart first, a bit like an old car that you found in a shed. You don't just try to start it. Uh, you don't just try to start it. So let's take the board out and then let's see what we've got. So there we have it, the motherboard. Um, a few things you can note about this. It only has ISA slots, there's no PCIe. There's no Visa local buzz, which I kind of hope this might have been because I haven't seen one since about 1994 or five. Um, they must be quite rare. Visa local buzz was like a, a very long slot, about so long. They had two different connectors, like a, one that fitted in a socket similar to this, and then another one which is in a socket more similar to a PCI slot, yeah, in line. interesting things if you can find one i'm still working so one thing you might notice first is where does the on off switch go the power switch well it doesn't if you don't know these boards it doesn't because this is an at power supply so you switch it on by switching the mains on and you switch it off by switching the mains off it doesn't have this sort of like soft start button yeah PC chips motherboard. This is the CPU, it's embedded on the board in this case, so you can't change it. This is for coprocessor, maths coprocessor. Find a bit of wire, let's see if you can probably read it. Uh, let's have a look. So there you have it, sideways. Yeah, AMD 386SX40. Okay, this is a 16-bit processor, whereas with the 486, the SX and the DX, the difference was that the DX had a math coprocessor built in. With these, the SX is a 16-bit processor and the DX is a 32-bit processor. And as I say, math coprocessor goes in there. So it's quite interesting, native 16-bit machine, yeah. to sims as they were called yeah modern dims there's your ram modules what are they well, they were normally one meg or four meg each one yeah this being a 16-bit machine it needs to have two fitted a 32-bit machine would have to have four fitted yeah I'm not sure what the capacity of these is. Probably I could work it out from the chips, but I'm much more inclined to hope I can get it working. Yeah, <laughs> let's see. So uh, it may have two meg of RAM, which is fairly typical for this time, and it's not in properly. Uh, two megabytes of RAM was fairly typical of this era. And then, okay, yeah, this is from 1993, which comes in exactly what I was saying that I was building machines like this when I had my first PC building in 1993, my first shop building PCs. This is where all the corrosion has come from the battery. So, what I'm going to do is take the battery off, clean it up test the AT power supply. I have got no good one here if it's not working. And then try and power this up and see if it works. I'll clean up the back side of it first and I'll remove the battery and clean up the other side. Just try to get some of this off here. This one doesn't look too bad actually. Okay, it's even worse. Okay, let's get this nasty battery off our motherboard. 
should be quite easy to do just hit up the one leg and just weave it out basically with my fingers I would think okay so this is where the battery is bit of flux will not do any harm here okay see if I can just get it to come out so just get hold of it Let the solder melt. It doesn't want to come easily. Try the other end. No, nope. it's stuck down with glue. That's why. Can you see it? So this is like before you had the usual button cell CMOS batteries. These were rechargeable. Whereas your CR2032, I think it's called, yeah. They're not rechargeable, these were rechargeable, that's why they actually fitted to the board directly, they soldered to the board. I don't think it would charge up well now, okay. Put that in there, let's try again. Yeah, now it's coming off. I don't believe you can get these anymore. It's a um, it has a number on it. You can see it. Uh, GP uh, three point six volt. That number this is GP six hundred or something. MKX three. So there's three cells in there. You can see. Yeah. So that's the uh, old battery, and it's gone now. We don't need that for now. But what we do need to do is clean up this mess. This needs some vinegar or something like that actually to clean up the rest of it, yeah, but it should be okay to test. I've certainly seen worse than that, so I think we can actually test it at least. The keyboard connector, although it's all on the surround, the pins themselves actually look okay, yeah. The pins themselves seem okay. Let's have a look at the other things that came with it. This is the multi-IO card, so motherboards of this vintage didn't have any serial ports, game ports, floppy controllers, hard drive controllers were not built on the motherboards. Okay, you had a multi-IO card to do that. Uh, this one, fairly typical, ISA multi-IO. These jumpers effectively select the various interfaces on or off, serial port, printer port and so on. So I'll just leave them alone. That looks pretty good to me. Pretty clean. This is the uh, GPU, yeah. <laughs> but of course it weren't GPUs, not in them days anyway. This is your graphics card. Uh, sockets so you can add more memory. Why don't they do that now? Yeah, I mean, you could just buy two more chips and plug them in, yeah. Realtek, so there you go. That might be the first time you've ever seen a Realtek GPU, yeah. Graphics card, VGA card. So, I don't know what this is from that number. We can have a look in a little bit. That's that. Then we have the power supply, which is an 80... Oh, no, sorry. Then we have this. So this is the hard drive. No label or anything on it. Yeah, look at that. Controller board. This is an ID hard drive. An early one, for sure. 
Uh, Connor CP3044. Shall we have a look to see how much data we can store on this? Well, we can see it has a capacity of 42.8 megabytes. Okay, there's some pictures of them here, some pictures of them inside. Uh, it was actually sold, I think, as a 40 megabyte drive, basically. Yeah, it's 3044. Oh, we can even buy them for two hundred and fourteen dollars if we want. How old is that advert? Okay, so that is the hard drive. That's the most likely thing not to be working. So we can have a look, but that is basically a forty-one, forty-two megabyte hard drive. Okay. Here are the AT connectors. Two of them. You have to be careful with these, you can put them on back to front, but basically all the black wires go together in the middle, that's the correct way to put them on the motherboard. This has uh, 12 volts, plus and minus, uh, 3.3 and 5 I believe, it was a long time since I looked at one. So we can just check if it's working. I think the easiest way is to just stick the meter leads down the holes basically. That one seems to be in there quite well. Uh, I'm pretty sure the red will be the 5 volts. We can soon find out. Uh, put them there. And then I'll power this up, but I'll use the light bulb current limiter because I have no idea what condition this is in. Let's just swing the thing where you can see it. Uh, the light bulb's there, you can see it. Let's uh, get a power lead. Now, I don't know if the on off switch on the front of this is working. It seems a bit sloppy, it doesn't feel very positive. Okay, we can plug that in. Well, it's actually on. Uh, the light bulb, actually, I had it switched to mains. I hadn't switched it on, so the limiter didn't do anything. So we have 5 volts. We have, uh, let's see, minus 5, plus and minus 5. We have um, the orange one. There's 5 volts. We have the red one. There's also 5 volts. That should be 12 volts, which is reading the 11. The blue one. Does it read anything? Yeah, oh, minus 9.6. Let me have a quick look online and see what voltages I should have. I'll just. Uh... Yeah, as I thought, the on off switch on the front doesn't work. It's. Just stuck in the on position. There you go, let me check the voltages. So this is the actual pin out. So we have 5 volt, 5 volt, 5 volt. And then on mine it's the white cable which would be minus 5. So we've got plus 5, minus 5. And then we got minus 12, plus 12. Okay, the oranges are powered good. So red, yellow and orange, plus 5, plus 12, minus 12. And then minus five on the white. So that's the four voltages we have. We can check them again now. Let's see if they all are correct. So I'll switch it back on. And we can measure them on here. Okay, so that's just a power good signal. Which should be five volts of power is good. This, yeah, plus five. Should be... 12 volt, this should be minus 12 volt. It's reading low, but I'm not overly worried about it. And that is all the voltages, though. The white one is a minus 5. Yeah, that reads good. Let's try attaching a hard drive, an ID hard drive, to put a load on the power supply. And it may well stabilize those voltages anyway. Okay, you can see I've just put a hard drive on it. Let's come again. And it may well stabilise. Let's have a look. 5 volts on the power good. 5 volts. Get into the hole. Plus 12. Minus 12 reads better now, yeah. Minus 5. Yeah, so they're all reading good actually. 
Let's see if we can power our motherboard up and if it works or not. I have the motherboard. This is the graphics card that came with it. It's extremely corroded on the VGA connector, but the board itself looks pretty much okay. Apart from the one in my other 386, which is a known good one, we can try if we need to. This is actually the only other one I have. I don't have any more. So I'll just try and clean this up and then let's see if this actually is working anyway. Well, it's quite a bit better. I mean, it's not particularly good, but I think I can actually get the cable to attach to it now. So let, let's see. Yeah, cable will attach to it. And I think it's probably quite clean inside. I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's just insert it several times. Okay. Stick it on our board in one of the ISO slots. I don't think it matters which one. So we'll stick it in that one. Well, I think originally it was probably down here, actually. You can try that. There we have power. We have everything we need, really. Let's just switch it on and see if we get a picture or not. We've got a blue light on the monitor. Oh, we've got a picture. <laughs> we've actually got a picture out of it. This 29-year-old PC gave us a picture straight away. Let's plug a keyboard and a mouse in. And let's see if we can actually load anything from that hard drive. That's the most unlikely thing to still be working. But let's see. I'm just about ready. Um, I have one of these. Yeah, I don't have an AT keyboard, but I do have an adapter from a PS2. So that's handy. So we can now connect our keyboard. I won't bother putting the mouse on. I suspect this has DOS on but you could have like Windows 3.11 or something like that. I've made the camera a bit bigger so you can actually see the screen. Okay, let's just arrange that a little bit. There you go. One thing I noticed when I powered this up before, and I'll just mention this, this thing boots up, at least the BIOS screen, much, much faster than a modern motherboard. Yeah, they're going backwards. This thing is much quicker. If I just switch it on, you'll see what I mean. Hard drive spinning. Yes, yeah, see what I mean? Wham! Okay. Can we get into the setup? Okay, keyboard interface doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, there's nothing lit up on the keyboard. This is probably down to some corrosion down by that keyboard connector. Or the fact my little converter doesn't actually work. Well, I inserted the keyboard thing several times. Now, it wouldn't power up. But having waggled a few things around, it did then power up again. I inserted the keyboard thing and it wouldn't again. So I've removed this chip. So this goes in the socket here. And one end in particular is quite corroded. So I'm just going to effectively... It's just a little Dremel grinding wheel thing. I don't have any emery cloth here. I need to get some. So I'm just going to rub it against this and just effectively clean the pins up. I've already cleaned the socket with some ISO as best I could. And I'm hoping this is what has suddenly made it act intermittently. So it, it started... It, it's switching on. I can measure the voltage on the ATX, all the powers there. CPU is getting a little bit warm. Notice you don't have a CPU cooling fan, by the way. You don't need it. But then, not starting up. And as I say, I did get it to work again, and then not again. So, hopefully, the problem is bad contacts in here. I've tried cleaning the sims, but they were pretty clean anyway. Clean the socket with a bit of ISO. I may end up having to replace this 40 way socket, to be honest, it's a bit messy, it's not particularly good. Well, let's see if we can just uh, clean this up and then try it again. It's doing quite a good job of it. I can also, with this, just turn it over just to the inside as well, effectively. Yeah, it's definitely dirty at this end, it's quite bad. I think this actually is related to the uh, keyboard. This, I'm pretty sure this is the BIOS, but it says BIOS on it. 
We should go through, so three, six, S expire size. Okay. I've now got one bent pin, but that's not a problem. Just try my best not to actually snap any of them off. Because that's a little bit more of a problem. Okay, that's a lot better than it was. Let's try it. Okay. See if it wants to boot up now. Camera where you can see it. Just reattach the power cables. As I mentioned, you can put these on the wrong way round. It's not particularly a good idea, so we'll put them on the right way round which is all the black leads together. Okay. Monitor, everything there. Yeah, let's see what we got. No, definitely doesn't want to boot up now. And this started when I was repeatedly inserting the keyboard adapter into here. Well, I have to say, the power supply is getting noisier, the fan, but this is getting more temperamental about booting up. Ever since I repeatedly inserted the adapter into here, it doesn't want to boot, basically. So, it was a bit into maybe the socket isn't good. So I think really what I need to do with this is to find some way to get the corrosion properly off the board. I will go and Google that, but no doubt I'll have to get some sort of cleaning solution to do it. I think vinegar might be a good start. I will have a look. I've just tried the uh, graphics card in my other 386 motherboard, it does work. I then thought I'd try to see if the hard drive is working, but for some reason on that motherboard, using the same I.O. card from this motherboard, it actually repeatedly spins up and spins down again, whereas on here, Admittedly, I couldn't get into the BIOS to set the settings. It doesn't auto detect, but I suspect this is too old to auto detect. You probably have to set the parameters manually, heads, cylinders, and such like. But on this machine, it basically powers up and spins and stays spinning. On the other one, with the same IO card, it, power, it spins up and down, up and down uh, every so many seconds. It will do it. I'll just try it again here. Let's give it another quick go. Let's see if it will actually uh, spin up and stay up on this one still. Okay. Yeah, it, it is in right. Okay, let's see what it does. You probably won't hear it because of the noise of the fan now. Yeah, it's spinning up for like 10 seconds or so and spinning back down again. So quite possibly this drive doesn't actually work. I think the next thing with this one is going to be, as I say, to find out how to get all the corrosion off it. Well, a quick look around suggests baking soda. Yeah, make a thick paste out of baking soda and water. Spread it on, leave it for 20 or 30 minutes, let it effectively dry and then wash it all off. So that we can certainly try, unless you guys have got some better ideas, yeah? In the comments below, yeah? If you've got some better ideas. Now let's have a go at it. In the meantime, I'll ask the wife if she has some baking soda, because it's like a woman's thing, yeah? <laughs> so <laughs> my wife will probably have some baking soda. So for now then, this one is still a work in progress. It did work. I have had it working once again since it started to act up. 
I suspect I may also have to desolder this socket. And maybe I should take the keyboard socket off as well because it's when I was repeatedly inserting in here, it stopped working for some reason. Uh, it doesn't look too bad underneath, but I'm pretty sure I could desolder that. I've tried to clean this as best I can. Um, I've re-soldered along here just in case I had a bad connection, but I don't think so. Um, all the voltages are present, I know that much, and this is still just getting a bit warm as it was before. So I think it's just some stupid bad connection over here, basically. So let me know what you think we can do with that, and we can make a video of how to clean a PCB. I think that'd be interesting. Uh, get your comments in, and we can all discuss it and then decide the best way. Other than that, let's have a quick look to see if we're going to make any money so far, yeah? So what do we have? Well, we have an ISA Super I.O. card, which I strongly suspect is working. We have an ISA graphics card, which I know is working. And we have, um, I don't think that's worth anything, a little PCI network card, so we don't worry about that. Uh, we have this one, which isn't working, so we won't count that. Uh, we have this one which is working, the uh, FX5200, so we can see if that's worth anything. We have two of these which I very much suspect are working, SB0220, so we'll look at those. We have the uh, Seagate Medleys, which we know is working, so we can look at that price. And we have the 250 gig. Hello! Oops, sorry about the interruption. We have the 256 gig IDE drive, which might be worth a few quid, actually. Uh, we also have the uh, GT220, so we can see if that's worth a little bit. And we have, of course, the motherboard, the P3, with the 600 megahertz processor on, three strips of RAM. Okay, and this is the QDI uh, P6i440BX. So, those things are working. We can have a quick look to see if this is worth bothering to have a look at to see if we can get it to work. And the same with this motherboard, which I think just needs a corrosion cleaning off. It was working previously. And, of course, the uh, Connor 40 meg hard drive, if we can get it to work. Okay, so let's do a bit of a research here. Let's see what we've got and what we potentially have as well. We have there the uh, GT220 um, graphics card. Let's see if it just finds that. Maybe there's a space in there will help. Yeah, one of those sort of things. So uh, if I can sell it, it looks like £10. This is UK, eBay, we have the uh, Sound Blaster uh, 0220, which is the Sound Blaster Live. We have two of these. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's see if we have some sold listings that might help. What do they actually sell for? 14, 14 seems to be, I mean, some are fetching more, without a doubt. That's the 0220, 0220, are these all the same? Yeah, let's say £14, we have two of those, it's 28. Uh, the FX, let's stay in the sold listings, FX5200, uh, ours is a 256 meg AGP. Let's see if any of these have sold at all. Yeah, that one's sold. 16, 26. Was that in its box? Maybe fetch more. 39, 26. I think probably we can say 25 is probably an average price. That one was 17, but with 20 of postage. 26 with 18 of postage. Yeah, these have all got quite a lot of postage on them as well. 57, 57. More, 73, 26. I, th I think we can say one sold in the UK without all that postage. 
we can probably say 30 quid 30 quid that's an English slang yeah 30 pounds what about the ISO graphics card well I'm not totally sure what this actually is if it has a model number so I'm going to put the reference number in and see what it finds 17kv2 Uh, I'll put VV2 didn't help. 17KV2. Uh, VGA. Let's just see if we can find something. Give us an idea. Does this thing even have a name? It's that thing, okay? It is that. That is exactly what it is. But does it have a name? <laughs> does it have a name that was branded? I'm sure it would have been called a something or other. Well, let's just have a look on eBay anyway. So, 17KV2. Can we find anything? No, drum kits. Okay. Uh, VGA. See if that finds anything. Yeah, I'm not really finding anything here. Let's try Realtek VGA. And then we'll, be, we'll have to look at normal listings. Realtek. Uh, ISA. Uh, VGA. That should be a good one to go for. Well, that's a different one. That's a Visa Local Buzz. Or is it notice it's ISA? It's ISA. Well, you can see the price of ISA graphics cards is all kind of a bit like all over the place, really. Um, so we kind of got to stick a finger in the air and pluck a sum out of the air. Yeah. But can we say... 25. I think that's reasonable. How about the Super IO card? Oh, let's have it. This was a PT606. Super IO. Does that find anything? ISA card. Well, that doesn't have any cables with it. Let's go just ISA Super IO and let's see if that finds anything. ISA Super IO. 19. I think we can probably say fair enough. It's worth about £20. How about these hard drives? So, uh, 250 gig. 20 gig, 250 gig. IDE, that should just do. What do we find? What's a SATA? There. So, there's a Western Digital for 42 with 80 of postage. And this is sold. Yeah. There's another one, 27, 20, 53. None of them are exactly the same as mine. Oh, hi, Tachi. Yeah, that's basically the one I have, 26, 27 it's sold for. So I think we can put 27 on that. The Seagate medal is 4321. What about this one? Let's just try in the normal listings and see if we find anything. Seagate medalist. We'll just find it. Uh, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, there's one there that somebody never used. 90. One there with bids on. 90. Yeah. But one here for 14. You know, this just shows to show you with this sort of thing. The prices are everywhere. 8 plus 27 postage. Let's try advanced on this. See if any have sold lately. Right, okay. 31 sold. 69 sold. 20 sold. Refurbished, yeah. So that's a good way to look at it. This says SCSI. I was his IDE. I'm not even sure that is SCSI. I think we can probably put, well, lots of postage on these. Yeah, but only £35. 
Yeah, so, so you, you just can't tell. 73. Yeah. Sorry, that's a different model. That is a different model. So we're just down to these ones, okay? Where do you want to put your average price in that? Yeah. Without the massive postages. Could we say it might fetch about £35, £40 in the UK? Let's say 35 because the postage would be low. Okay. So that's the stuff we have working apart from the motherboard, the P2. So let's look at that one. So this is a i6BX440, I believe. P6i440BX. Uh, what we got? Well, that was for parts only. Parts only. That one only that <laughs> you see this is it. That one fetched twenty-five pounds. This one with a processor and some RAM fetched hundred and fifty pounds. This one fetched seventy-nine. Yeah, same motherboard, sixty-three. Parts only twenty-six. So like that's the kind of like why is that one so cheap compared with all the others? Yeah, uh, these don't have processors included. That one does. So I'm guessing my, if I sell mine with the 600 megahertz, it's going to be a bit less than that. With the RAM, I can easily put that on a little bit more. Can we call it 100? Uh, can we call it 100 pounds? I don't think that's too far out of the way to go. I might even fetch more than that, yeah. Okay, so that's that. And then the stuff that isn't working, is it worth fixing? Let's have a look. So the hard drive, CP3044. Connor, after, but Connor, the making, I think. Has anybody sold any? One for parts only fetch nine. And that's a different model. That isn't working. Can't find any of the same model I had. That one isn't working. Bad sectors. That's a completely different model. Let's just go back into the normal listings. Here we go. <laughs> Parts only. Uh, that's a working one by the looks of it. 24 plus the postage. Yeah, 195. I mean, this is what you find with this off the prices. You just can't get anything reasonable. So, ours, as far as we know, is not working. And we don't know what it's worth. <laughs> that told us a lot. Okay. Over to you guys on that one, yeah. Uh, Rage 2C. Graphics card not working. Well, again, I think we need to see if there's any sold ones. Uh, 30, 41. Again, with very large postages. These are coming from, not from in the UK. Uh, actually, it's a different model to the one that I have anyway. It's not working. Could be worth fixing. And the last one then, this motherboard. Has not we saw any of these? It's the M396F. Yep. So, £50. Yeah. This one's got the video multi-IO, sold for 127 Again, coming from Latvia, from Ukraine, high postage costs. So, I'm pretty sure that is well worth fixing. Okay, let's just tot up what we've got from what we actually have working now, yeah? So we have already then all this lot, uh, a bit iggledy-piggledy, but I'm sure I can add it up. 8, uh, 13, 20, 25, yeah, 5 carry 2, uh, 1, 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, and 2, 17, carry 1. So we have 
for my 50 euros, 275 pounds worth of stuff at very realistic prices, and we know that they do sell. And then I would say between the motherboard, the hard drive, and this, we probably have another hundred, another hundred pounds worth, possibly more if we can actually get it to work. But that's what we have right now, yeah. As you can see then, at 10 euros each, even though I bought three I didn't even want, so I spent 50 euros in total, we got a very good deal, especially out of this machine, and pretty good out of the 386 if we can get it working. But this really was where the money was, or the money is. And I think that just goes to show, guys, when you see these things at car boot sales for like 10, 20 euros, just buy them, yeah, and you will not go wrong, you will not go wrong. I do it all the time, you can see, you've watched this week after week, especially now in the winter months when the boot sales are much busier, they are quiet in the summer, but in the month, winter months they're much busier, and you can definitely pick these things up for next to nothing. Okay, hope you enjoyed it anyway, let me know if you want to go car booting yourselves, and I'll see you all soon on another Learn Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now guys.